Renowned across the globe for its intricate architectural marvels, Chicago stands as the birthplace of the very first skyscraper. Chicago is a city of remarkable contrasts, displaying a multitude of emotions like the changing seasons. It is a city that embodies the very essence of transformation, mirroring the changing seasons with an uncanny ability to adapt and evolve. And sometimes, seasons play no role whatsoever, as the city's emotions will change at their own pace. To embark on the city tour of Chicago, it's essential to select a day when the city is in a delightful mood. Your impression of this dynamic metropolis will be profoundly influenced by the timing of your visit. Chicago's architectural heritage is incredibly rich and diverse spanning various styles and periods that have shaped the city's skyline and urban landscape. The embodiment of fine arts, or beaux-arts in French, can be seen in the design of the Union Station. Crafted by the acclaimed architectural firm of Graham Anderson, Probst and White, this transformation hub opened its doors in 1925. Its great hall, characterized by a soaring 115-foot barrel vaulted ceiling, during the early 1990s restoration project, the crew has uncovered hidden art deco elements, including murals and decorative elements that had been concealed for decades. Art deco architecture in Chicago is represented by the impressive Civic Opera building. Designed by the esteemed firm Graham Anderson, Probst and White, the Opera House opened in 1929. It is the home to the Lyric Opera of Chicago. Its sleek lines, geometric patterns, and the distinctive 45-story office tower that complements the Opera House itself encapsulates the elegance and innovation of the Art Deco era. Beyond its aesthetic allure, the Civic Opera House resonates as a cultural cornerstone, a stage for world-class performances, and a symbol of Chicago's commitment to the arts. Testament to Chicago's early skyscraper innovation stands the Marquette Building. Designed by the visionary architects Hallward and Roche, this structure, completed in 1895, mirrors utility with aesthetics. Its facade, adorned with intricate terracotta ornamentation, serves as an example of how form and function can coexist harmoniously. He, he actually was one of the more peaceful Like, he didn't drink. Yeah, sure. If you see, if you look here, you can see that he kind of opened the triggers and tried to, you know, if you know the history of what happened to the indigenous people, he tried to bring peace and they actually gave, gave the Christian period. He was actually not that bad. There's those are the same thing you want. No, I mean, you know, it's good. To he was one of the first people to find what became Chicago, which is an Indian name. Well, I, mean, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I used to come here about this. Yeah. This is old. Oh, that, that was made in the 20s. So you liked this building as a kid? Oh, we used to come here and they used to have stuff happening here. This was long. Uh, and now, uh, and if I recall, it wasn't that many office buildings. Because this is where the people to hear that everything else is mm -hmm. That was the other 20s, and that's the way that it still is the same today. The Marquette Building was actually one of the first air conditioned buildings in the United States. The innovative system, known as the Dewar System, used ammonia-cooled air to regulate temperature, making it a comfortable, technologically advanced workplace in the late 19th century. In 1975, the Marquette Building was added to the National Register of Historic Places. 
ensuring the protection and recognition of its architectural and historical significance. Yes, Chicago is translated from the Algonquin language into Wild Onion. The region where Chicago now stands was inhabited by Native American tribes, including the Miami, Illinois, and Potawatomi, long before European settlers arrived. The area was known for its abundance of wild garlic, onion, and leeks, which contributed to the Wild Onion interpretation of the name. When French explorers and fur traders began to arrive in the late 17th century, they adopted the indigenous names for various locations. The area eventually became part of the French colony of New France. However, the French presence was relatively short-lived as the British took control of the region, but the name remained the same. A legendary Chicago landmark. The Palmer House was burned to the ground during the Great Chicago Fire just 13 days after it opened its doors. It was quickly rebuilt across the streets of its original location and reopened in 1873. The new Palmer House was one of the first hotels in the world to have a steel frame, making it virtually fireproof. A remarkable achievement in the wake of the devastating fire. Like it's in mind. It's in its ornate exterior rich in detailing evokes an air of timeless luxury. Beyond its architectural splendor, the Palmer House is an emblem of hospitality and has hosted countless events, elevating its status as historical landmark in the city's vibrant narratives. The history of preservation hardware building in Chicago is a tale of preservation and transformation. Originally constructed in 1868, the historic structure was designed by prominent architect William W. Boynton and served as the elegant mansion of merchant and banker David Adler. In 1912, the building was used by the Three Arts Club, which was a space for women dedicated to pursuit of drama, music, and painting. Over the years, the building underwent several transformations. In the 1970s, it faced the threat of demolition. However, in a commemorable act of architectural preservation, the building was saved from destruction. In 2015, it became the retail space for the luxurious restoration hardware furniture store, whose aesthetic is elegant, sophisticated, and exudes a sense of elevated refinement. Downstairs, they have a cafe, three arts cafe, which is where you can get a table um, because they're all booked. When they first opened up, they didn't take reservations, but I think since COVID, they started taking reservations. It used to be that you could actually buy coffee at the counter and then sit anywhere and study or at work and drink your coffee. Now they don't allow it. I'm not sure if you can work or not, but they don't allow just getting coffee and sitting wherever you want.